Welcome to the Creative Pen Podcast. I'm Joanna Penn, thriller author and creative entrepreneur, bringing you interviews, inspiration, and information on writing, publishing options, and marketing ideas for your book. You can find the episode show notes, your free author blueprint, and lots more information at thecreativepen.com. And that's pen with a double N. And here's the show. Hello creatives, I'm Joanna Penn and this is episode number 447 of the podcast and this is an in-betweeny sewed show, uh, although as I discussed coming up I will be doing more audio so these may become more regular. So let's get into the show. Podcasting goes mainstream, how can authors benefit? Lessons learned from Podcast Movement 2019. So audiobooks are the fastest growth segment in publishing and podcasts sell audiobooks because you're reaching people who are already listening. Those who consume media in audio, like me, want everything in this format. And whether it's conversational interviews, industry news, serial fiction or a full cast multi-voice production, podcasts are on the rise. 2019 marked a tipping point, with over a billion dollars pouring into the industry and the rise of ever more creative podcast networks. Edison Research reported that, among the US population ages 12 and older, the total number of people who have ever listened to a podcast passed 50% for the first time. Tom Webster, Senior Vice President at Edison Research, said, This is a watershed moment for podcasting, a true milestone, with over half of Americans, 12 plus, saying that they have ever listened to a podcast. The medium has firmly crossed into the mainstream. So I've been podcasting since March 2009. <laughs> Uh, So over 10 years now, and I've never been to a podcast conference before Podcast Movement this August 2019. Now, similar to my decision to self-publish before the Kindle, (laughs) before self-publishing became something lots of people did, podcasting is something I decided to do before there were courses, before there was easy to use software, before 4G, before smartphones made it worthwhile to podcast. So it was really strange to find myself amongst several thousand attendees and an industry that has really only just starting to grow significantly. And lots of people kept saying, oh, podcasting is only just started. And I'm like, yeah, there's a few of us here who've been doing it for a long time. (laughs) But uh, I have pages of notes on ways I'll be improving my own podcasts. And yes, I have two, which is inevitable if you love audio and you create in this medium. I have books and travel as well as this show. Um, But how can you as an author take advantage of podcasting going mainstream? So I'm not going to share all of my detailed technical notes or things that I learned that might not be applicable to you. I'm going to hopefully share. So in this episode, I'll explain some of my lessons learned from Podcast Movement 2019 and how it could impact you in terms of creation, marketing and revenue possibilities, plus some thoughts on the mindset of a creative entrepreneur. So even if you're not interested in creating your own podcast, you should find this useful in other ways because it's got some lessons that are more general um, for authors. One, attending live events will grow your knowledge and income. So this is broader than podcast movement, but it's worth sharing up front because I need to remind myself of this every time I travel for work. So I'm an introvert, as I've said many times, and as I write this, and I'm actually... I'm a couple of days after writing this, so I'm feeling much better now. You can hear it in my voice. I won't record when I feel exhausted. But basically, as I wrote this, I'm, I was utterly exhausted from too many people, too much noise for five days in air conditioning um, and bloated from hotel food, jet lag, and just generally feeling 
like crap. Uh, Introvert hangover, (laughs) it might be called. So the travel experience was pretty expensive as well and tiring. And I got to tell you, Americans, Orlando Airport was one of the worst experiences I've ever had traveling to the USA. (laughs) And I've even had to cancel my business credit card because of multiple fraud alerts. I actually had three fraud alerts while I was away and um, have ended up cancelling my credit card. And apparently that's quite common in that area. (laughs) But I was like, yeah, on every practical level, it was a difficult trip. But I'll be heading to another conference in the USA in just a few months. And I will keep going to live events and conferences. I will keep paying for conferences that will be useful. And I will keep doing this stuff in person because it's time away to focus working on the business, not just in the business. And without that time to reflect, it's too easy for everything to become busy work. Another book written, another launch, another ad campaign, another social media push, another podcast interview, more and more emails. You have to get off the wheel sometimes or it will spin you into crazy. So I revisit my business and personal goals every time I travel, especially when I'm alone. And I went to Orlando um, without my husband, Jonathan. So um, and also because it was a podcaster conference, there were a few a few friends I met there, thanks to everyone I hung out with. Um, but mainly uh, I had a lot of alone time uh, well, in my room <laughs> when I wasn't in on the floor. But I was even though there were thousands of people there, I did have a lot of time um, in my own head. So I had time to reflect reflect on what's working, what I need to change, what still makes me excited and what I really have to stop doing before I run away from all of this screaming. (laughs) I always learn from conference sessions and I write a lot of notes and this time I discovered some exciting new technology which immediately impacts my business and will more than make up for the cost of going. I also met new people and connected with those I know from many years ago, uh, particularly good to connect with Evo Terra, who I met first of all back in the uh, Podio Books days and we actually met in person, which was great. And also obviously met lots of podcasters too. And uh, Patreon supporters, so thank you for everyone I, I hung out with. You know who you are. Uh, so yeah, podcast movement I felt has reignited my enthusiasm for audio, which was already at a high point. And I think you guys know that. But as my, I think sometimes, well, as my friend Orna Ross tells me, Orna Ross from the Alliance of Independent Authors, um, she, she always tells me the moment I start to get bored of something is the moment it actually starts to be recognised by others <laughs> as important. <laughs> so you know, and I love podcasting. I already knew that. I love audiobooks and I'm doing more of them. But sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, it's just another thing. But actually, it is the time for audio. So I need to double down on podcasting and not assume that I know everything because I've been doing it for so long. So I just need to shake it up a bit. So expect some changes, all good ones and more audio, not less. So just to reflect back on you, Um, get out of your comfort zone. Go work on your business, not just in your business. What events could you attend in person? And of course, I know not everyone can afford to travel internationally or you don't have time with with family things or your job. But what local events could you go to that give you a similar experience, even if it's outside the author niche? And in fact, I think getting out of the author niche is fantastic. I think I learned even more on this trip because it was not about books. It was a completely different thing. So um, yeah, you'll learn more from other industries. So what can you do? Two, voice connects and builds trust. Is there a voice like yours out there? Fake news, add overwhelm. We live in a world where trust is scarce, but also in a world where people crave connection. We all want to belong, and that's why being indie has become far more than just a method of publishing. Creatives, we are a tribe. 
And I love the tribes that were represented at Podcast Movement. Yes, there were radio execs and greybeards and tech people and veteran podcasters like me. Yes, someone actually called me a veteran podcaster. And I was like, really? I think the word veteran (laughs) should be used in a different context. But yeah, I I must say I did feel uh, old in the niche, let's say. Uh, But overwhelmingly, the conference was millennial and diverse. So I attended a women's networking event packed full of fascinating people with interesting shows in every niche. niche. And women in a, it it was basically a tech conference and women at a tech conference are usually few and far between, but it was um, pretty interesting. I felt it was very mixed. I I felt it could have been 50-50 in the newer demographic. In the older demographic, it definitely skewed male, but in the younger demographic, it was very mixed. So I attended this networking event and um, some of the niches included NASA, uh, uh, from NASA to foraging, dating advice to aviation, investing to government contracts, political shows about race to spiritual conversations. There was also a society and culture track that had lively sessions all day every day from lots of different communities, including the LGBTQ community. And there were also meetups for podcasters of colour. I met creators from the Coloured Girl Beautiful show, as well as the Latter Day Lesbians, both of which were fantastic podcast titles. (laughs) And there were also pronoun badges, so you could indicate your preference. And this is the first time I've ever seen pronoun badges at a conference. Uh, So whatever you think of using different pronouns and stating it, so she, her, he, him, they, them, it was a mark of respect for other groups. And that was really refreshing. And that was millennial. And if you're over, you know, if you're in Gen X or you're a boomer or whatever, I think this is a mark of the demographic shift that is now happening. Millennials are the largest living generation at this point and their uh, influence, I feel, is beginning to be felt much more in these types of conferences, which I love because I think millennials are going to save the world. (laughs) So... um, Podcasting is tribal because it's so personal. It's a voice and there's so much you can learn from voice. And a lot of this overlaps with the book Marketing Rebellion by Mark W. Schaefer, which I read uh, on the, I started reading on the way to the conference. It was one of the books I picked up as a, um, yep, I'm going to read this uh, while I'm away. And it's a great book, highly recommended. So it's Marketing Rebellion by Mark W. Schaefer. And it, he writes, um, kind of future thinking, strategic marketing. It's not about uh, tactics. It's it's about mindset a lot of the time. But he talks about the rise of ad blockers and the lack of trust in brands trying too hard in a world where we have a very good radar for advertising and we ignore most of it. Uh, He talks about millennials in particular caring more about the people behind things and they are more likely to buy artisanal and local. They want an emotional attachment to the people behind the products. And in the end, we buy from those we know, like and trust trust, uh, which is something I've been harping on about for 10 years. uh, And I learned about in the beginning, but a quote here from the book, we're moving inexorably toward a subscription driven, human driven, emotion driven, ad free, funnel free, big brand loyalty free world. And that is a really interesting statement. And he did put at the front of the book, this is going to scare you ad executives. This is going to shift things a lot. So I learned the concept of know, like and trust in marketing at the beginning of my journey from people like Seth Godin, Brian Clark at Copy Blogger, Yari Starak, Chris Brogren and other marketeers who focus on relationship and personal authenticity before sales. And that is where social media started, believe it or not, because it doesn't feel like that anymore. But now it's overrun with paid ads, which of course I use to sell books like many authors. But my core is still content marketing. And if you listen to my interview with Pamela Wilson in episode 443, we geek out about that in much more detail. So you can go and listen to that. So yes, I've tried to expand my use of paid ads in recent months, particularly on Amazon, as discussed in episode 442 with Michael Beverly and Russell Blake. But at heart, 
it's not what I love. And you guys know this. I have never hidden this. I mean, it's not what I love. And so after, what, three months of trying to expand and it feeling weird for me, I'm scaling it back down again. (laughs) So yes, I will continue to use ads. I continue to believe that ads are an important part of book sales, but it's only a very small part of what I do. I'm doubling down on what I'm good at and what I feel is useful to you and a good use of my time. And that is writing and podcasting, which, and I see podcasting as part of my body of creative work, as well as a core pillar of my business. So this is what I wrote in my journal after reading Marketing Rebellion. Be more human, be more helpful, Give more. Serve my audience. Don't follow the latest trend. Double down on being human. You are not a big brand. Flawed is okay. I hope that resonates with you. I think flawed is okay is the point. And I I really believe also that this is something we haven't accepted very well in the author niche Yes, we want to get rid of all the typos in our books. That's not what I mean by allowing flaws. But it's revealing ourselves like this in a less than edited way. And this is, a, and obviously I'm reading from some of these notes and others I'm making up as I go along, like this bit. <laughs> but I feel that flawed is something that because of the publishing process where every iteration gets rid of more and more of conversational speaking as such. This is something that perhaps podcasting can do for those in the writing niche is allow us to be more flawed. Um, And I think that's good because we need to step behind the curtain of, of what being a creative is. So here's my challenge for you because of course I am already doing this. I have been doing this for a long time and I'm sharing honestly with you guys. And I also get personal about another side of my life on books and travel. So I let pretty much everything out there these days. Um, But what about you? So you're listening to me because we have something in common. Something in my voice and my experience resonates with you. But are there voices out there that reflect your reality? Are you a white, middle-class, Oxford-educated, happily child-free, Gen X, well-travelled, married English woman who publishes indie books? Now, it's unlikely we cross over on every spectrum. Perhaps only one of those things is something we have in common around indie. Or maybe you're just, you know, I haven't said their author or writer, but maybe that's where we connect. But who else is out there representing you and the other facets of you in the world? Or could you be that voice? And that's what I loved about seeing the diverse um, people out there and why when when um, some of other friends in the niche say, oh, you know, well, I, I didn't want to do that because you've done that. And I'm like, yeah, but you're a completely different person. Someone who listens to me and resonates with me is not the same as someone who resonates with a different person in this niche. Um, Anyway, rounding up, Mark Schaefer, another quote from Mark Schaefer. Successful marketing in the future will have to be presented in a way that is unquestionably authentic, local, personalised and even handcrafted. It will have to make a difference that people can see and experience. So that's another one from Marketing Rebellion. And if you are interested in the future of marketing, I do suggest you read that book. It's very, very interesting. Three, podcasting is the new blogging. Why Google is now indexing podcasts for search. So Google announced on the 8th of August 2019 that they would be indexing podcast episodes. Episodes, not just shows. And I did announce that on this um, show a few weeks ago when this happened and I was like, whoa, this is amazing. This is going to change the world. Uh, And was very excited to find that there were several sessions um, at podcast movement on this and Google, the head of Google podcast was actually speaking. So um, what this means is they're going to be showing podcasts on the first page of results in a similar way they do with videos. This is, if you go and check right now, it's in English only and only in the USA and maybe also and Canada 
so um, North America, as they say, but they have a global focus in both territory and language. So expect this to expand over the coming months. So coming to a search near you. (laughs) Now, obviously, they didn't go into too much detail or everyone would be gaming it tomorrow. And I do fully expect this announcement to change the way people are podcasting. If you have a podcast and you are naming it something that does not relate to keywords in your niche, then you need to sort that out. Um, I've always used keywords and always used um, a title first. So for example, if you have a podcast, there's a few podcasts I would love to listen to, but they just they just have a name of the person they're interviewing, which is no use because I don't know those names. I want to know the topic they're talking about. So this is uh, something that's that's important. But basically what they're doing is they're reading in the audio file, they're transcribing it in the background and then indexing the transcript in order to serve audio in search results. Now, Many people in the room mentioned the potential issue of accents because, of course, even within the US and Canada, there are different accents. People, um, you know, might have, uh, you know, even the difference between, um, you know, the different racial voices were affecting these things. And this was brought up, obviously, in a diverse conference. People wanted to talk about this. So they said, do anything you can help do to help. To, sorry, do anything you can do to help us by adding notes and even a written transcript. So I'm pretty happy because I've already been transcribing for years. Um, now, they won't release the transcript they create, but they did take the feedback that lots of people would like to help make it more accurate by uploading their own, a bit like you can on YouTube. You can upload a transcript. So that will be interesting I will definitely be interested in in that. Um, But if you have a podcast already or if you have been a guest on a podcast and you're interested in making sure this is indexed, you don't have to do anything to be indexed. It will just happen. They will be looking through all the big um, areas where podcasts are already there and they will be pulling them all in. You don't need to submit it somewhere else. Now, in the search, people will need to use the word podcast at the moment, but in a future rollout, they won't need to. Their idea is to, I think they said double the rate of podcast listening worldwide is is their goal. And in many places, there are very few people listening to podcasts yet, but that is going to change. So it really, it did feel like day one. It was very Jeff Bezos. It's always day one. And it it felt like, goodness me, this is really going to change the way audio is consumed and discovered around the world. It's very, very exciting. Um, So yes, at the moment, you have to use the word podcast. So if you're in the in North America right now or everywhere else in the world, let's say within a few months, six months, whatever, um, you do have to use the word podcast. So podcast about elephants was one they kept using. Um, but in the future, if you just searched um, elephants, it may well serve you videos about elephants, then podcasts about audio, uh, sorry, <laughs> about elephants, and then text articles. So that's really interesting. And that is the order that it will be. So it will be video, audio, then text. And he showed uh, screenshots of of the screen. Um, But that has to demonstrate how people's preference is skewing away from reading text. They would rather have a multimedia form of information. There was also a lot of talk about language, about the word podcast. It's not a word used by many who are new to listening. So they suggested calling it a show rather than a podcast, which is a bit of a shame for those of us who've been doing this for 10 years. And of course, this is the Creative Pen Podcast. Um, But there you go. So I don't think the word is going away. Um, But yeah, they, they talk about showrunners in podcasting just as much as showrunners in TV, which is interesting. So why is this happening? Why now? Why the change? And this is important for all of us. And I've talked about this, but it's not just my opinion. (laughs) Many of you are like, oh, I don't need to worry about this now because it's ages away. But I have talked about the rise of voice assistants and it's not just smart speakers. And I understand people who are like, oh, well, I don't have uh, an echo in my home. I don't have a, 
you know, a HomePod or a Google Assistant device, but you probably have a smartphone. And if you use voice search on the smartphone and that's where search is rising, you expect a voice response. So if you think about Google's revenue model and always think about revenue models, how do people make their money? That will impact how things change. So Google has a revenue model based on advertising for text-based search. But voice search is rising. So in order to protect their future revenue model, they need to be in voice. So my business has a revenue model also based on text search. And it really is about 95% of my income is based on organic search, which I've built up for years on the Creative Pen, which now gets nearly 800,000 unique visits per month. So I'm also following Google by optimizing for voice search. Now, there was a session on voice assistance. It wasn't that interesting, to be honest, because I know quite a lot about this space now. But what they did note is that there will be a proliferation of assistants. Um, one of the uh, panel said, Google Assistant will win for search. Amazon Alexa will win for buying things from Amazon. Siri will win for delighting you with new experiences. And the expectation is that you will use multiple voice assistants, not one master assistant. And um, I had a quick chat with Brett Kinsella at voicebot.ai, which is a fantastic uh, site if you want to learn more about voice assistants and smart speakers. Uh, He talks about it being like apps for your smartphone. So you will use different assistants for different things. You won't just have one master assistant. That's not the future. So I will be focusing on optimizing my website for voice search as that will bring people into my ecosystem. Also looking at developing for Alexa in order to drive people to audiobooks. But that is a small part of my revenue compared to search traffic which drives affiliate income, sponsorship, book sales, course sales. So for me, optimizing for voice search is far more important than developing an Alexa skill, for example. So I had thought I would be getting into Alexa skills, but now I think I'm going to focus more on uh, optimizing for search. Now, SEO rules apply around headlines. So episode titles should be you know, just basics of SEO, uh, search engine optimization, use the right keywords, create specific content that suits your market. They also stressed contextual audio a number of times. And this is interesting because think about the type of thing people listen to at different times. So this might be, they didn't mention any specific examples, but this might be life, life experiences. So different contexts of life, for example, buying a new car, what's the safest family car, or, um, you know, asking questions about having a baby, there might be mum and dad shows and on the car, it might be car shows that come up. But also the contextual was um, people listening in the car on the way to work versus on holiday, where perhaps people would rather have, you know, there's different things that people want at different times. Um, There are podcasts for sleeping now. Um, So, and that's actually a growing niche. So really interesting that people were listening at night trying to reduce screen time is really interesting. Podcasting for children, because again, people want to reduce their screen time, Uh, all kinds of context to think about. So maybe that gives you some ideas. So I did ask whether um, there will be something like PageRank, which Google PageRank, I have a good PageRank on the creativepen.com. It's a trusted source in a niche, uh, basically rewards a trusted source in a niche with lots of incoming links that has been around a long time. And of course, this podcast has been around 10 years and has lots of incoming links. Um, But will that do better than a brand new show that is more SEO optimized? Because let's face it, I have been SEO optimizing. But if someone comes in with, you know, loads of little show, little episodes on specific topics, then, you know, maybe they're going to rank higher than me. But will PageRank make a difference? Um, And they said there's no definitive answer. Surprise, surprise. But it would make sense. So I would expect some kind of trust there. They are... um, yeah, they, they want to be app independent. So you'll be able to search and uh, there will be a player button on the screen. So people will be able to play straight away. But it seems like they are not aiming 
to necessarily capture everything on Google Podcasts, although they are moving um, more energy into Google Podcasts. But essentially, you can use the listen on Google button and that will play straight away on an Android phone. They don't need the app, which is very interesting. So you should have listen on Google Podcasts, listen on Apple Podcasts as the main focus of driving people um, to your podcast. So what does that mean? (laughs) What am I doing in response to this? Because this is a big deal, right? So I considered starting a third podcast, which would be a QA and a show with lots of five-minute segments on different specific questions. But I just I don't want to do a third show and I only want to create things that I enjoy creating, that I love and that will help you. And the idea is to bring people into my ecosystem and also to, you know, it's a, it's a lot about voice brand. It's a lot about connecting as a person. And I don't feel that quick Q&A is going to help people connect necessarily with me. And also I answer Q&A in my Patreon um, rewards. So I'm not going to do a separate Q&A show, but I will be inserting shorter segments in between episodes, uh, in between these longer podcasts, once I sort out what content I want to make. So definitely more audio to come. And in fact, James Cridland from podnews.net, which is fantastic, um, or just search for podnews on your podcast app, uh, says, more shorter length sub five minute podcasts will be made. These work well on smart speakers and respect listeners time. Expect not just news updates in this format, but others too. So I do think that Q&A podcasts will become much more of a thing. So that might be interesting in your niche. So I did mention to Zach, the head of uh, Google Podcasts, and also I had a long chat with one of the developers on the Google um, stand about the possibility of integrating audiobook content because podcasts sell audiobooks or even just linking through a creator name. So Joanna Penn could link through to podcasts um, and audiobooks uh, for things like narrators, writers, voice talent, people who work on podcasts as well as audiobooks. So they wrote that down, but um, Google Play uh, audiobooks and Google Podcasts are different teams. So I know this these things become difficult <laughs> in these big organisations, but fingers crossed. And now, weirdly, there was no audiobook presence at all at Podcast Movement, none. Even though there was a audio fiction track and a lot of writers and voice talent presence, there were a lot of people writing for Podcast First and developing uh, creative uh, podcast content. Now, if you, I mean, you're obviously listening to my show, but I hope you realise that there are huge numbers of storytelling podcasts out there now, and there always have been, but these uh, are now, there's some very highly produced shows now, I asked a veteran podcaster, Evo Terra, uh, who I um, talked about before, but basically I met years ago when Podio Books was a thing. And he said that, quote, podcasting is like TV and audiobooks are like film. And the two are very different mediums. And the world is going crazy for TV right now and serial fiction. So podcast fiction is taking off in many niches, attracting raving fans and a lot of investment. So I would, I mean, it's very, there's been some news also about Wattpad, the continued growth of Wattpad and serial fiction uh, is going to be very interesting as to whether indies move serial fiction into podcasting in, in a different way to have stories that go on and on and on and on and on rather than kind of finishing. So it's, it's incredibly creative. And this is what was interesting. There were very few authors present. Um, I mean, lots of people had a book, but, you know, it was not an author conference. But there were a lot of creators. I mean, everyone was a creator. Every, even the tech people all had their own podcast. So it was great to hear from Aaron Mankey, who's the creator of Law. Uh, if you don't know Law, it is a podcast about folklore and stories. And it is, it's a top ranking podcast, but it also got a book deal. There's three books out of which I have a couple of them. And there also is a TV show on Amazon Prime. And Aaron said, I'm a creator. I create for a living. And 
he creates first for the medium that people prefer and basically said you can touch more people with TV and audio right now than you can do with books. And I know this because this show has been downloaded over 3.5 million times in 215 countries, which is far further than I have reached with my book sales. Now, Aaron says, everything is storytelling and everyone is a storyteller, whether you think you are or not. Find an idea that is perfect for audio, create for that medium. Story is more important than tools. And more than that, story, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, we're all telling stories, um, is more important than the physical book. Ah, you know, I know that's a big thing, but... You can present your creativity in all these different ways. It does not just need to be a book. Now, interestingly, Aaron scripts everything. I also script everything. When I do audio like this, I have a script. I've already written it. So I'm writing first. Aaron is writing first. So I think there's going to be an explosion in writing for audio. Uh, It's becoming very different. So, uh, Yeah, I think don't consider this to be less creative in any way. Um, It's just a different way of expressing what you're doing. Yes, but I was, so I was still shocked that none of the audiobook companies were there. There was also nothing on how AI text-to-speech might explode the volume of audio created and make it a lot cheaper to create audio. Um, For example, the way the, and there was just an uh, announcement about Microsoft doing human like speech, and it's coming. I think in the next year, we're going to see an explosion of human level speech that is easy for all, us all to use. So, um, right now, for example, it's very expensive to do a full cast audio production. Uh, if you have different actors for the different voices, uh, you might have all these different people recording all over the place, then you've got to do your sound effects, you, and you need to do all the mastering. So, you need all these different people, but if you can license AI voices, to read those characters, that makes things potentially even more creative. So I think it's very exciting. But what it does mean is voice talent work will change, but there will definitely be a need for audio first writers and audio editors. So again, as ever, I'm always early on this. You can check out the AI disruption episode a few shows ago for more predictions, but uh, it's certainly coming. Four, the future is global and mobile. So there were sessions on international podcasting, or those those sessions were not very well attended because uh, it was a US-based conference and because at the moment the main uh, sales are and the main listens in the US, a lot of people are just focusing on that market. But you know I've been harping on about this for years too. (laughs) But here are some stats that make me happy to have a global focus. 95% of the world's population live outside of the USA. Apple iPhone might dominate in the USA, but mobile users outside of the US are predominantly Android. 78% of phones are Android, but only 1% of podcast lessons happen on Android right now. So that is where the growth will be, especially with Google's new focus. So the player is installed on all phones. So you don't need the player to play audio on Android anyway. So that's really interesting. Non-US podcast listeners also use Spotify and YouTube to listen to podcasts, audio only. And that reflects in the demographics. So younger people listen to podcasts where they also listen to music. um, And that's Spotify and YouTube. Pandora has also got into podcasts, but Pandora is only in the US, so is not global. Um, Podcasts are considered part of native audio content, not separate. And that explains the YouTube consumption, which is where a lot of people listen to music. And this is encouraging around the smart speakers because at the moment, most people are listening to music on smart speakers. 
So if you are outside the US or you're anywhere and you speak another language than English, or if you are anywhere and in an underrepresented group, now is a great time to start podcasting. Uh, so they talked um, about the Spanish speaking market, particularly, which is growing fast. And also that US podcast networks are starting to launch product in multiple languages. For example, Dr. Death by Wondery was released in seven languages at the same time just recently. And it's also becoming a film, I think, or a TV show. I went to a session with Hernan Lopez, CEO of Wondery, uh, who is Argentinian, but based in the US. And he talked about using the model of TV to release globally simultaneously. People expect a global release with Netflix. And I wish the publishing industry would sort this out because it's ridiculous to hear about a book um, that they're, they're publicising on social media only to find it's not available in your country. And uh, that's what encourages piracy. And I've got to mention this right now because it annoys me so much when authors say, um, you know, oh, I'm getting all this all these pirate downloads in this country when They've only released their book on Amazon Kindle and it is not available to buy in that country. So this is when um, piracy happens. It's when, yes, there are some people who will pirate anyway, but the only times piracy has ever even crossed my mind is when there is a book that I really want and it's not available in my country. So really think about that. Um, so yes, indie authors can release all at once. You can release all over the world, but only if you publish wide because Amazon is not available in every country in the world. Again, see my episode on exclusivity versus wide publishing, um, which I did a couple of months ago now. Um, so back to global, you know my hobby horses by now. <laughs> when asked in one session about differences in global markets and how they decide what to make, uh, the founder of Los Podcasteros, terrible accent, sorry, and Martina Castro said that there are no rules. And this was fascinating. She said that there are, there are no statistics on what might work in Latin America or Spanish speaking markets. So now's the chance to just make stuff. Um, and she said, quote, make things that don't exist and give people a chance to decide if they want it. And I love that. That is the independent creator model. Don't base your creation on what is trending or what people are buying or what you think is a trend. There is not enough evidence in podcasting to see the trends anyway. But embrace the millennial trend of micro niche. The era of the bestseller is over. We live in the long tail. Five cool tech and marketing ideas. So I, I have so many notes on so many cool things, but here are a few that I thought, okay, these might be interesting to this audience. Um, I realise that not everyone is doing a podcast, but um, if you are, here are two things that are interesting. So one is Descript. Um, so I walked past this booth, I was walking around the exhibition hall and I walked past this booth and I I literally did a double take. I looked over, went, that's interesting, and then went, whoa, that is interesting. It's It could be a game changer, especially for everyone who is not technical. And that's most people. I mean, I include myself. I don't. I am not massively technical. I just do the things um, I need to. Like, I, I'm not a programmer, uh, but I do use technical tools. I'm happy to try things. But Descript, you import a file, it generates a transcript, and it's a hell of a lot cheaper than everything else. So once again, I'm changing my transcription service. Uh, I, I have been using a service called Trint, but now I'm going to move to Descript. Uh, so it generates a transcript, but then you can edit the audio by editing the transcript. Now, this is huge. You can edit the audio by editing the transcript. You can also use it to generate snippets of audio based on the text. Now, that to me is exactly what I've been looking for. Now, if you listen to a lot of podcasts, you'll hear a lot of shows where the host might be talking about a topic and then they'll intersperse a quote from someone else, as in an audio snippet. Now, this is a pain if you have to do it manually. You have to search through shows, find timestamps, cut out the audio from the audio file with the timestamp and then paste it in somewhere else. This, you just highlight the text and it will create an audio snippet. Wow! I just 
brilliant. I'm utterly delighted by this. Um, and you can get 100 free minutes if you want to try it out uh, with, surprisingly, my link. Uh, thecreativepen.com forward slash descript d-e-s-c-r-i-p-t links in the show notes as ever or of course you can just go to descript i think it's dot com uh but yeah 100 free minutes uh with my link so i'm playing around with that and will hopefully do more snippet based shows this will also help me do shorter content so uh with what i already have which let's face it is a lot of content (laughs) so very exciting uh, the second piece of tech that was interesting is Clean Feed. So I've been using Skype since 2009, but I stopped by their desk um, because they had they had this thing. It said, it's 2019 and people are still trying to record interviews with Skype. Look into better options. <laughs> and I was like, uh-huh. Now, I have tried Zoom and I've tried Zencaster, but I've had trouble with both of them. Uh, I don't know why, but Zoom really doesn't play well sometimes between the UK and America, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, But Clean Feed is used by the BBC and essentially cleans up the audio files to make them better across the internet. And so I'm going to try it out. I haven't used it yet, but I was very impressed with what they showed me. So that's Clean Feed. Then uh, some marketing tips that I thought might also be applicable for authors. So one is t-shirts. Lots of people had T-shirts with their podcast URL and logo on. So these are quite simple T-shirts. I think the problem with authors is authors will put their book cover on a T-shirt, which I got to say for a woman, um, a female body shape does not necessarily work well because things stick out at different angles and a a, a book cover will disappear. Um, (laughs) Just... (laughs) Ladies, you know what I mean. Whereas what I saw was the just a URL and then a logo at the top of the T-shirt. And this is great for an Instagram ready world, right? Because everyone's taking selfies with other people and the URL is right there. It's just right there. Um, So that's very interesting. I do think I have never liked the T-shirts that people have worn to author events. I've thought, ah, looks a bit you know, unprofessional. A book cover doesn't necessarily look great on a t-shirt, but I think URL logo on a high quality t-shirt can look really good. So that's definitely something I'm thinking about. Uh, I went to a great marketing session and they talked about sharing snippets from shows and now I've got the tool for it. But take a quote, do an image, make it short, accessible and share that on Instagram with a link in the sh- a link in the show notes. So what they said is don't do this for every show. Pick the top show top shows and do it with them. Now, obviously some authors are doing this with quotes from their books, um, but instead of just having a quote from the book that is just text, why not if you don't if you haven't recorded it, you can just record that little snippet. So you've got a multimedia shareable uh, for social media. Another cool thing was, it's it's quite funny now, people call it IRL. So in real life engagement. So it's actually got a name. It's IRL. Uh, So connect with people at events and drive them to your podcast. Now, obviously, we go to many events and we're driving people to our books. But if you're at an author event, there's lots of people promoting their book. So why not pr- promote your podcast if you have one or promote something that is not what everyone else is promoting? So um, the Latter Day Lesbians mentioned that they go to Pride events and they have a stall and they promote their podcast that way. And they have seen growth in those areas. Now, of course, it's always expensive to go to events, but this might be a way to stand out. And then finally, Use business cards with QR codes on that take people directly to your podcast or your book landing page. But be aware that many people are on different devices. So don't just have a link to Apple Podcasts or your Amazon US, um, Amazon dot com book page. So I like QR codes were really used everywhere. And of course, in the more mobile economies like China, um, QR codes are used for everything. So um, QR codes have been around a long time, but I definitely felt that they were used a lot more in this conference than I've ever seen um, in the UK, for example. 
So will I go back to podcast movement in 2020? Well, I won't be attending next year because at core, it's not my tribe. I am an author first. I'm a podcaster second. And I still feel that way even though I'm deeply a podcaster as well. But I will likely buy the virtual ticket so I can listen to the sessions and that might interest you. Um, You might even still be able to get the virtual ticket from this year um, so you can actually listen to recordings. And there there were like eight different tracks that were fully programmed for two and a half days nonstop. So there was no way to get to all the sessions I wanted to listen to anyway. So I will be listening to a lot more of them. I will be making some changes to the podcast on the front end so you get more audio but also on the back end with some of the technical things I've mentioned and other things so you won't notice those things but I will be making some changes I definitely got far more value from the trip than I would have done uh, just by listening to the sessions but I feel like I learned enough that will serve me for the next couple of years I'll be refocusing on SEO for audio to make the most of Google changes and also changing up my Patreon offering. So if you're a patron, you'll hear about that first and I'll share that on the show at some point once I've actually (laughs) got back to doing all these things, not just writing a list of them. (laughs) So if you're thinking about starting a podcast, there are lots of options these days. Similar to self-publishing, the tools and services are exploding and some are fantastic and others are not fantastic. So buyer beware, do your homework before jumping in. And uh, I share how I make my show at thecreativepen.com forward slash how to podcast. And I'm also currently working on a course on podcasting, audiobooks and voice tech for authors, which will be coming out in the next few months. And I'll turn that into a book at some point, but it's turning into much more than I expected. So this is a growing area. It feels, as I said, it feels like day one. It feels like, well... Yeah, it feels like uh, not necessarily right at the beginning, like 2009 for ebooks, but it definitely feels like things are really taking off. So I hope you have found some ideas from this, whether or not you podcast yourself or if you're considering pitching podcasts for interviews. If you found this episode or any of my other episodes useful or inspiring, there are a couple of things you can do. Uh, You could tell a friend or two about the show and we can say show. Do you listen to audio? Do you like audio shows? or podcast, tell an author group you belong to. We want to grow the overall podcast listening audience, um, lifting all boats, etc. It should be, this show should certainly be available on whatever app they use for music. It's on YouTube. It's on Spotify. It might be on Pandora. I need to check. (laughs) But definitely on Google Podcasts. Apple Podcasts, etc. Uh, so yes, you could tell people. Uh, two, you could go to the show notes page and click to share on social media. So every episode you can go and uh, share. Um, you can leave a review on whatever service you listen to. And of course, if you find the show useful and um, yeah, want me to keep going, then uh, you can support the show on Patreon and you will get the backlist Q and A audio, which will be, which is at least what is it, thirty thirty Q and A shows, um, with behind the scenes info, personal stuff, and ask me anything. So I hope you have found that useful. Happy writing, and I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed these lessons learned today and that it gave you some ideas for how you could take advantage of podcasting and audio first technology in the months and years to come. Because as I said, it's only getting started. So, uh, which I'm very pleased about because I I feel like my doubling down on this quite early uh, has been a very good thing. So if you want to position yourself for the resurgence of audio first, um, then yeah, get involved. And uh, next week, I will be talking about happiness, anxiety and writing with Lisa Lilly, as well as juggling your writing career with a day job that you love. And this is great to talk to Lisa about these topics. Um, Anxiety is a huge part of many writers' uh, lives, but also um, I love the fact that Lisa loves her day job and so she balances her writing career with her day job. And many people do not want to become a full-time 
full-time writer. I understand that. Um, so yeah, I think you're going to really enjoy that interview. So happy writing and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes and show notes available at thecreativepen.com forward slash podcast. You can also get your free author blueprint at thecreativepen.com forward slash blueprint. If you'd like to connect, you can tweet me at The Creative Pen or find me on Facebook at The Creative Pen. See you next time. <laughs>